Welcome. This is going to be a quick video on how to create predictions for new data once you've uh, established an optimal uh, model for a prediction for a particular set of data or a problem. And uh, so how to create predictions using that model for some new data as well as how to save uh, the resulting predictions for uh, later use uh, or analysis. And so to begin with, uh, let's assume we have some sample data. In this case, this is uh, the same data on house prices that we've been working with before. And so our label here is price. We have a bunch of different properties and we have a bunch of different attributes uh, that describe these properties that we could hopefully use to <clears throat> predict the value of the home okay and so um, let's just say we're just going to pretend that we ran a regression model that was predicting optimally sort of the best we could do uh, compared to say K&N trees and a bunch of different uh, other uh, possible predictors and so um, as usual we would uh, wrap our regression into the cross-validation operator so we would have uh, let's say here linear regression that we estimate based on our training set uh, and this is a very simple regression not selecting any attributes not eliminating collinear features using all of our different attributes um, and so all that's going in here as usual, well, uh, the training set is fed to estimate the linear regression and what we save is the model. And then this model gets applied to um, our test set. So this model gets applied to the test set. And um, usually we would also look at how well it's actually performing. So uh, our predictions here that we applied to the test set based on the estimation of our model, in this case, uh, the regression, um, how well do they compare? Uh, in this case, prices um, that, we asked, that we predict for these different homes compared to the actual prices that we have. And we're gonna record the RMSE as well as let's say uh, the squared correlation R square. <clears throat> and then we're going to save this performance and we can also save the predictions for the test uh, data. And so this was it and uh, the regression was going to throw us a problem which is some of our data is actually text. Um, and um, let's say in order to solve this problem what we did is we converted some of our text data to dummies, so nominal to numerical. Okay, and now it's no longer throwing us this error. And usually, what we would look at is in this case the regression model, um, our predictions for the test set, and the performance. Okay, and as usual, so the order here of these operators doesn't really matter. We could have connected performance second and then the test set. The only thing that matters is what do we actually look at in terms of the results in the end. And uh, let's say in this particular case, what we also did is we selected some of these variables, or rather we deselected some of these variables that were redundant. So we chose a subset. Um, in this case, we kept, uh, because we had some information on the house's uh, location, which assumedly is very important when it comes to price, but we said that this was captured by the variables measuring longitude and latitude. And so we took out the address and we took out, um, what else, the street, street number, zip code, and I think that was it. And so we used basically select attributes to select the subset, but we want as actually the opposite. So we want to deselect the subset, so invert selection. And now we're getting, let's have a look at uh, before and after, breakpoint after, breakpoint after. So here we have... 25 regular attributes in our data, but afterwards 
we deselected or removed a couple of those. So now what the model is going to be fed with is our 94 properties, but only uh, 21 regular attributes that the regression can use to estimate a, a line. Okay. Now, <clears throat> let's assume that this was our model. So this is just quickly creating a model that assumedly was our best shot at predicting property values. Now, um, let's say that uh, we ran this and we concluded that this is the best that we can do. And um, we, however, have some new data, some new properties. Um, so let's have a look at this new data set. Um, in this case, it's 10 different properties. And usually, uh, often in the case of new data, so I just created this quickly to simulate new data, we wouldn't have price. So we would often only have, you know, uh, some information as to these properties. And uh, now the idea would be to go and to apply this model that we previously um, established as the best model to predict house prices to this new data, right? And so what we could do, first of all, we need to have you know this new data so we can drag this in here and <clears throat> how do we apply this model well let's try and do this and begin simple we would say well we want to apply a model specifically we want to apply a model to this new data so the apply model operator is usually what it wants is a model and then it wants some data to apply this model to so we could say well please apply uh, a model to this new data Okay, the question of course now is which model? Okay, and so um, what we have here, we have our regression model that comes out of the cross-validation operator. That's really the model that was estimated right here and saved here. And so we could say, okay, well, this is actually the model that we want to apply to this new data. Okay, and then what we get, uh, we can pass through the model, but more importantly, we also get this data now with um, predictions because we applied this model to this data. Okay, so let's save those and let's also remove these. So assumedly we're no longer interested in the performance and the predictions for the test set here because we've just established that this is the best model and we want to apply this to this new data. So let's try and apply the model and then we would get some uh, predictions. It turns out though that now if we ran this What's going to happen <clears throat> is that it's throwing an error and specifically it says the input example set which is our new data does not match um, what the model is expecting okay and why is that happening well it's happening because we actually instead of or on top of just running this regression model we also ran some other models here specifically converting all the text data, the nominal to numerical, is actually a model. Um, and we can see that based on, so what this operator gets is the data, and what it outputs is the converted data, as well as the original data, if we ever wanted it. We usually only want the converted data. And out here is also something called the pre-processing model. So this actually saves the way that this original data that came in here was converted. So for a standardization case, let's say, just to show you, uh, so if we were to normalize, let's say instead of running a regression, we ran KNN, we would have normalized here before. What goes in is the data that is to be normalized. What goes out is the normalized data. Again, what it gives us the original data if we ever wanted it for something. And it also comes with a pre-processing model. What these pre this pre-processing model here saves is um, how, how was the data normalized? So in this case, it would say, what were the averages and the standard deviations that were used to then subtract the average and divide by the standard deviation in order to normalize all these different attributes that were fed in? Okay, and uh, so in this case, let's remove this again. What we have here is nominal to numerical, and we get a pre-processing model that saves, you know, which ones and how were they converted, before we then fed this data to the regression. And now when we have our new data set, well, of course, if we look at it, um, 
we don't have these things converted. We don't have dummy variables yet, but we have the same original data as we had for our initial data set. So what can we do? Well, very, uh, you know, by brute force, we could just say, well, let's just convert it in the same way. So we can add another nominal to numerical operator here, and we convert this new data in the same way that we converted our original data before we apply the model. And now, if we run it, <clears throat> this actually works. Well, because it's now the same type of data, that's, uh, which is what the model is expecting. And so we get our actual predictions, in this case here for the new house values. We get a price. Let's assume, again, that we wouldn't actually have this price. And so we would have our predictions here. Okay. Now it turns out that what we just did here is sort of repetitive and also not as elegant as it could be. Because let's assume that uh, instead of just having nominal to numerical here and then a regression model, we could have a bunch of different uh, pre-processing models here. Maybe we also normalize. Maybe we did uh, use other operators that we'll use in the future that uh, are uh, models basically that are applied and that could be saved. One thing we can do is instead of trying to replicate all of this pre-processing that we did before we ran the regression is we remove this again and we use something called the croup model operator. The croup model operator all it does for us is basically um, it takes as the input different models and then remembers them and in the order, the order here is important first model, second model uh, as was it as it was applied and then it applies them all okay um, at once and so in this case what we want or what we need is really we need first of all uh, this nominal to numerical conversion and then afterwards we need the regression model okay so what I did is I first fed the group models operator the first model which was the nominal to numerical conversion and then the regression model which came out uh, right here. Okay, now we can actually apply this group of models to the new data and we won't have to do anything with the data so we won't have to sort of copy again the numerical to uh, nominal to numerical operator and now um, what it's going to do is it's going to apply both of these models at once and uh, we get our predictions. Something that we could also do just for you to see this is if we were to save the model that we used, basically the model that came in here, if we pass it through and have a look at it, what we'll now see is actually uh, a group of models because it's coming from the group model operator and specifically what uh, was done is first all of these um, Nominal attributes were converted to numerical attributes, okay, and then this regression was run and applied to the data, okay, to create these predictions. And that's essentially how we can use the group model operator if we want to have it a bit more elegant and not have to repeat possible uh, pre-processing steps and other models that we applied um, in, in a specific case. And then we apply this bunch of models to the new data and we get predictions. Now we're not entirely done because let's assume we actually want to do something with this prediction. So here in this case we got predictions for these 10 new properties. Um, let's say we want to do further analysis with this or we want to pass this really uh, the most obvious use case is we just want to pass this to a colleague. So to, the, to a real estate agent or to uh, the city in this case because they were wondering about what should they pay to homeowners before they expropriate them and so Another operator that can do that for us is write Excel Write Excel all it's going to do is going to take whatever input in this case We want this label data basically the predictions for the two new homes and I feed this to the write Excel operator and then we can you know, still have a look at it, so just put that uh, input through and give it to us for the results view. But importantly, now we need to say, okay, an Excel file gets saved where? 
let's save this somewhere. We can just say on the desktop for now, and we'll say um, call this uh, our prediction results. Prediction results for new houses. Okay. And so now it's going to actually save this as an Excel file, which were our 10 houses uh, with the data, but also including the predictions. And so we can run this. We well, don't see anything new here, but now probably somewhere, if we can find it, we should uh, get this new data set, let me search for it. Okay, on the desktop, instead of manually searching for it, we just use the search function. It's going to open it. It's going to take a second here. And what it shall give us is basically um, our data here. So we could have also removed all of these dummies that we created and all of this data uh, before we saved it to Excel by only selecting a specific set of attributes. Specifically, the only thing we wanted maybe is the property ID and the prediction price. But now we get uh, our predicted prices here in an Excel format. So we could do, we could, do, you know, pass them on or we could do any sort of further analysis with this.